What's going on you guys, Michael here, and today we have Wacky West Episode 6. I can't believe we are 6 episodes into this series. Today we have a jam-packed, awesome episode for you guys. And uh, before we really get into this video, we are going to do a quick recap of what happened in the last 5 episodes. Here we are over by the RMC. Uh, which we will be getting to a little bit later. We will be making more changes to that. And now over here on the first plateau, we have a couple shops and a swing ride as we build in episode one. And then we have a Intamin reverse free fall coaster like Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain. And then I do uh, actually limit the amount of guests, but I do do that a little bit later. And so yeah, bit interesting stuff. Uh, Back over on the other plateaus, which we'll get to. I mean, we have the wing coaster. You have, you have the banana coaster. That's what I call it. It's the El Loco, SNS El Loco, which um, we redid in episode four. We had the rides on the ground, um, like that huge, extremely popular Vacoma Boomerang, which we'll get to in a sec. Um, and then over here we have the food court, which is really cool. The the wing coaster, a launched wing coaster, follows that around a bit. And you have all these paths connecting it. Connecting all the plateaus from each other and stuff. And so over here we got a whole bunch of picnic tables and shops and vendors that people can eat at. And it's really cool. Uh, the wing coaster goes through it like that. I think that would be awesome to see. And down at the very bottom we have that little town, which we'll even get to a little bit later. And over here we have the swing ride, uh, I'm not sure what they're called, and then in the last episode, the live stream, we actually built this steam train, and then down here we have the kitty coaster, that's more or less a family coaster, it's like a glorified kitty coaster, but that's really popular, and then over here we have the little town that welcomes you to the Wacky West Park, um, so really, really cool, you guys, and through that plateau, that's how you get up to the top, that little entrance down there. And over here we have an extremely popular Vacoma Boomerang. Uh, it is so crowded, but it's it's a cool ride. Uh, if you want to see a POV of that, go back to episode one. Anyway, you guys, uh, really big episode. First, we're going to start off with uh, adding a queue line to the train. And then over here is the El Loco, the huge El Loco. That's really cool. But then we're going to come back to this train, and we're actually going to add a queue line to it, because, well, I didn't get to do that in the last uh, live stream. I had no idea what I was doing, if you guys recall that. But now it's going to start speeding up, and we're going to do a time lapse uh, for the rest of the voiceover. But over here, we delete the RMC, and actually we're going to be building a brand new coaster. I'm actually joined with Alex today. Uh, this is his coaster. We'll get to what it is in a little bit. But it's a really cool coaster, so watch to the end, you guys. It's a bit of a longer episode, but it's a good episode. So we're building it in this area of the park in the back right-hand corner uh, where the RMC, relocated RMC, was. Alex and I both agreed that after the last episode when I was trying to make changes, it was a little sluggish, and we just didn't like where it was going. And we're about to replace it with something so much better so much bigger, so much taller, faster in every way, shape, or form. It's like the reverse RMC treatment, I guess you could say. It's taking away the steel track, and I'm not going to completely spoil it for you guys. Uh, I'm definitely going to let Alex explain it. He'll be on in a minute or two. But anyway, yeah, it's like the reverse RMC, so we're bringing it back to a wooden coaster because wooden coasters are extremely easy to theme, and as you can see, it's going to be a dueling wooden coaster, so I'm going to let Alex talk for a bit, uh, explain to what you guys what he wanted with this ride and what we're trying to go for. So here he is. All right, so my plans for this wooden coaster were to, um, first of all, raise the station up so you get um, momentum out of the station. And you'll see that uh, we're going to do that in just a second. Just trying to get the right height here. And for the name of the coaster, um, I was battling between like two different names. It was uh, Duel of the Century and Western Standoff, and uh, me and Michael both agreed that Western Standoff was a better name, so that's going to be the name of the coaster. So anyway, uh, as you can see here, we're just getting trying to get the right height, right length for the station and cars and stuff, and um, we're going to be building the brake run right now. Well, Michael's going to be building the brake run. And so the trains aren't actually going to get to the station at the same time. 
one's always going to be ahead of the other. But um, there's going to be like a point where they're done racing and they're just, you know, getting back to the station to reload for the next train. Uh, so as you can see, that one is on the outside and it's going to take longer to get into the station than this one that's on the inside. Alright, so they're right next to each other um, and we actually build a little bit in later from the back so you can see that. Our concept, or my concept, I was telling to Alex, is it's always easier to build the brake run and the last few elements because um, some of my earlier coasters, I don't know if you guys remember, you have to give yourself some leverage. Uh, I don't know if you remember that old arrow looper in the first ever Planet Coaster live stream on this channel where uh, <laughs> I had to build like two chain lifts at the very end. And even with the RMC, we didn't do that right. Or that was just because the plateau is in the way, but it's hard to get it perfect the first time. That's why I always start with the brake run and uh, maybe the last two elements or so of the ride because you have to work up to that. You have to leave yourself enough speed, enough room. And if you don't, if you hit autocomplete or do something like that, it just looks so weird. Anyway, I'll let uh, Alex explain what he was thinking uh, with these first elements. Okay, so I wanted a decent speed to come out of the station. I wanted a decent height and a decent speed. Uh, you guys know this is in this is uh, nowhere near the speed that it actually is. So they're both going to bank away from each other uh, to go into the first lift hill. And normally on um, these types of coasters, the lift hills will be right next to each other. But um, I'm gonna do something a little bit different up here because you know I want I wanted like original idea. So um yeah, you get a pretty good speed coming out of these uh coming out of the station into these helixes. I think we decided on like 15 miles an hour or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 15 miles an hour I think that uh, was the station. So that was kind of annoying cuz it kept saying like to auto complete whenever the track was next to each other. Something on Planet Coaster, I was telling Alex uh it says it can connect to, well this one actually would be connecting to the wrong coaster actually, the, co the brake run, the wrong brake run. And I was saying to Alex, I wonder, not do this on this coaster, but test it out, uh, make this a Mobius loop coaster, but replace the track in the station with just a block section. I wonder how well that would work if you could time it right, make, uh, do the right stuff so you could ride on both sides, kind of like Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain or something. I think that would be really interesting. Anyway, trying to get both sides lining up, uh, starting the chain lift. Yeah, so the chain lift is going to come out, as you see, it comes out of the helix at a 45 degree angle. So, like I said before, the lift hill is a lot different from most racing coasters. It's not next to each other, it's, um, they're at a 45 degree angle, like I said, and then this is going to be a pretty steep lift hill. Um, I think the height, the exact height was 178, and it's going to be the same for both. Uh, I wanted to add in a little pre-drop here, so, um, so we're going to have to repeat the same thing with the other side. Um, just get a, the chain in there before you start the lift hill. This is such a GCI drop. It's more like Wildcat at Hershey Park, GCI's first project. Uh, that's what this reminds me of with this huge pre-drop, but it's actually super cool because uh, these are definitely going to be different ride experiences. As you can see, the right side uh, has a little hill, or it's on, on top of like a wall, um, but yeah, it's super, super interesting, super cool. So far, the coasters are going absolutely perfect, as you can see, and we also did change the colors to yellow and red, kind of like McDonald's or, I don't know, ketchup and mustard, something like that. to match them up exactly just to get like um, everything exact so they would stay the same for as long as possible because you'll see later in the video with the elements it's going to be hard to match them up close so like the trains are going next to each other but um, they're pretty much doing the exact same thing I don't know when I watch this back it looks like one's ahead of the other but I, I don't know it might be just me <laughs> I think it's just you actually, because uh, for the first part, I know I did get everything the exact same. It's a, a mirror image, but uh, as the ride gets further down the drop, it it starts to uh, lose it, lose each other, and it's more or less just trying to make 
the other train <clears throat> line up with tighter or sharper uh, more banked turns or drawn out turns to get them to line up but as you can see this is a very good drop I definitely mastered a, a curved GCI drop for sure especially with the El Loco off the the second drop that I did the curved drop it, it looks perfect it rides awesome and overall this coaster is just going super well so far I mean, um, it was actually really hard to match them up exactly. Like, the first one we knew what we were doing, but Michael actually had to write it down what we did exactly to do on the second one. Yeah, I wanted the same feeling for both. Uh, just something I wanted, I don't know. I thought it would just be easier to write down. Yeah, because, you know, you want them to be exactly the same. You don't want one train to be ahead of the other for most of the time. And this is a pretty tall drop, so we're going to have to, like, um, you know, you can't bank it too hard at the bottom of the hill or you're going to get a lot of rust and roughness. Because this is a GCI. It's not going to be the smoothest as it goes to. Well, some of the newer GCIs are actually pretty smooth. Like, Mystic Timbers comes to mind at Kings Island, for sure. But yeah, as you can see, one drop goes into the quarry wall. We'll do some really awesome rock work theming and actually do some water theming a little later on uh, after the coaster is a little more complete. Uh, but really interesting, actually. You might see here in a, uh, I don't know, almost a minute's time, uh, our screen recorder or the disk space on our computer ran out. So we had to convert this. I'm so glad that the whole entire file didn't get corrupted. but this just stopped and you'll actually see us continue uh, a little later on in the ride so uh, if you want to see an old POV of what the coaster looked like we actually went back and redid the coaster made it a little bit longer made it a little more intense a little better if you ask me but yeah we'll definitely be willing to show you guys in maybe Wacky West episode 7 or something but as you can see we're doing the water theming right now some really dirty green water yeah, and like the other POV, um, on the second half of the ride, it was like, we made a lot of, like, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to turn out really good, but I don't know if some of the decisions were good enough, because there was lots of rough elements, like, um, uh, one, it, one, it went under the station, instead of, like, we turned around, and then we went the opposite way to get to the station, but, uh, that was just one of the decisions that, uh, you know, made it more rough because we were, like, we had less amount of space. And you're still going really fast on that second half of the ride. So we made some changes, and we made it on the opposite side to connect to the brake run. Yeah. The brake runs are in a little weird situation. Uh, you get a sped-up POV. This is definitely not as fast as it's going. I think it's uh, sped up, like, 500% or something. I mean... It's, it's insane. This is probably an hour and 11 minutes work in about f 10 minutes, I think it is. But yeah, super interesting, you guys. Uh, I don't know what I did wrong, but those two aren't lining up. So this coaster definitely stays low to the ground. All right, here is the second clip. This coaster stays so low to the ground that that second airtime hill, this is what we had. This is the layout that we had. Um, it wasn't too great, uh, double ups, double downs, curved S-bends, uh, all that type of stuff, helix, that's basically all the ride was, and, uh, it wasn't too great, so, what we did, we wanted to make it better, uh, and, well, <laughs> more intense, I guess you could say, this ride stays so low to the ground, and, like I said a little bit earlier, we wanted, I'm gonna start working off the brake run a little more to give myself more room, make sure that the coaster can end and actually hit the brake run pretty accurately. So really neat theming for you guys to look at as Alex talks some more about the coaster. Yep, uh, see you got palm trees and cactuses and the little area over there, maybe uh, we'll get a shot of that a little bit later. Uh, this is where Michael's just working off the brake run, um, so they're both gonna go into the same element. Uh, he was explaining to me, like I didn't quite understand it, I thought it would be almost easier to like go off um, just go off the regular coaster instead of going off the brake run, but it does turn out really nicely in the end. Oh, and there you get a good shot of all the rock work. Yeah, <laughs> that took me a good 15 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the rock work with the little pond. Uh, that's like that's like my favorite view of the coaster. Uh, it's 
some really nice landscaping and theming and stuff. And uh, like I said, this is called um, Western Standoff, the coaster. So uh, maybe if we zoom in on, I believe it's the yellow coaster on Helix, there's two people shooting guns at each other. They're very small and they're kind of covered up by the palm trees. But if you're on the ride, you can like see them fighting it out and battling. Uh, and this is not like too much of a heavily themed coaster. Like there's not that much theming, but you know, it's just enough to get by with a theme park. It's more of a thrill coaster. I wouldn't even say it's enough to get by. Like, if you look at Disney, they don't add thrill coasters. They add a lot of family coasters. M Universal more or less has a lot of thrill coasters, like Incredible Hawk. That doesn't have theming during the ride. It has theming during the queue. Anyway, uh, right here, really cool. And at the uh, the airtime into the break run, I was kind of doing something like Mount Olympus does with Hades and Zeus. Like, you go into this big drop into the break run i don't know it's it's like a mixture between that and uh how hades 360 uh has a drop into the station it's really odd watch a pov of it but this element right here that crossover it's kind of like the rolling thunder hill on el toro that's what it reminded me of and here you have some of these really crazy cool but weird uh gci smaller drops kind of like on lightning racer mystic timbers different mini uh, gci drops in a way as you can see, they both do like half of a helix, but one goes under the other, and we were just trying to make that drop less intense because, you know, you were going at a, a high speed, and the G-force was pretty high on that area. And uh, as you can see, the elements, like, one does a double up, and the other one, you know, does a curved air time over, and like Michael said, the GCA drop. GCI. <laughs> GCA. GCA. All right really interesting uh sorry alex i'm gonna call you out but he he said that he would take this over almost any rmc which i thought was really weird i mean i get how unique the coaster is and stuff but in no way shape or form would i take this over some of the oh, bigger no, better would, rmc's <laughs> i would definitely do like you know um, fuel bandit vengeance and zadra or any any amazing rmc like this but this could compete with uh, lots of the you know older rmc's even I think it could. This was um, meant to be one of those big, bad wooden coasters, I feel like. Uh, Twister at Knoebels. It wasn't meant to be the best, newest, smoothest ride. Uh, it was meant to be forceful and intense and just huge. As you can see, the drops are just big. I don't like indescribably big. A, yeah, huge and bulky, and then the rest of the ride stays really low to the ground. It's kind of like uh, the first half of El Toro, uh, it's up in the air, and then the second half it gets super intense. Uh, it kind of this ride kind of reminds me of that, but this is not going to be the first. This is the first wooden coaster in the park, but it's definitely not going to be the last. We, I have some ideas for some other wooden coasters, but yeah, this is really cool. It's such a GCI style layout. I feel like with the airtime curve drop airtime hill curve drop and we had some double ups and curved s hills or whatever they're called really cool you guys yeah and like M like michael said this is definitely one of the older rides in the park i mean i don't know we built the kitty coaster first and then we sort of like you know started building the other stuff um but this i feel like would definitely be the oldest ride in the park because you know it's wooden it's a gci uh, so as you can see here, uh, just going into some more intense elements, and this is the curved airtime hill, where uh, the section, and we're going to go into a break run after this, or mid course after this. We do a, yeah. no. we we do this huge, uh, we do this huge kind of, um, what's it called at the new ride at SeaWorld at San Antonio Stingray or something like that. I d I don't know. Uh, I'll edit it in post, but I'm having a brain fart. Anyway, we do a we do a nice curved hill up into a mid course, but really interesting. I want to tell you guys, <laughs> I tried building a station off camera or on camera. It just didn't work out. I was trying to build stations for the train and this ride, and my building technique, just me trying to build, is absolutely awful. I cannot build on this game to save my life. I can build a coaster, a perfect coaster, but I cannot theme and build. I mean, rocks and a couple fountains is not is not um, 
is definitely not theme park level like I say this this park should be but uh, I'm trying to watch a whole bunch of different tutorials and somebody I keep watching keep coming back to is uh, theme park worldwide he has some incredible 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 uh, theme parks that he built on planet coaster and I think he definitely gave us inspiration for this ride um, I've we've watched him in the past week or so, but here you can see uh, we're changing the trains to GCI style trains. Oh yeah, Michael really got me into the theme park worldwide. Huge shout out to him. Um, I mean, his building technique and like the stuff he builds, it's like an incredible amount of detail. Um, right now I'm on his uh, latest park he's doing. Uh, I think he, he's not doing that one anymore, but yeah. As you can see, this coaster is running very smoothly. You can see they're racing and they're neck to neck. They're right next to each other, pretty much the whole coaster. So that, that's good. Um, and we had to slow down one of the brake runs. We'll get to that in a second. Um, as you can see, this uh, where you go up into the brake run, Michael's building that right now. Uh, some good banking. But uh, we had to make one of the brake runs a little bit slower than the other one, just so they would match up. Um, just so they would match up and stuff, and it goes into some cool theming and landscaping. Uh, you guys will see that later. Yeah, what he was saying, uh, I had to slow one of the trains down by two miles an hour, one mile an hour, something like that, just so I wanted them to line up a little more on the drop because uh, I guess you could technically say after the mid course is where the race kind of goes its own way. Um, if you're speaking storyline, uh, maybe somebody shot the other person or somebody's wounded or something happens that uh, they're running away or they just have to split ways because if you see the coaster is beside each other within a couple feet um, and the return trip one's always over the other they're not lined up 100 percent and we do a turnaround where they actually split off after the mid course which you'll see here in a few minutes it's just it's so interesting. Yeah, and like Michael said, um, you know, they're neck and neck one one time, and then you know maybe one got shot and he's wounded, and now he's fallen behind a little bit, and the other one gets a chance to catch up, and then they sort of go their separate separate ways, and then meet up, and yeah, that's pretty much the whole like storyline of the coaster, because like on the lift hills. Maybe like that's when they were meeting to do the standoff, um, and then you know they sort of battle it out, and then here's where you know one gets ahead from the other, and then they just about make it to the end in time with each other. Like one's always gonna win, like I said before, but you know it's pretty close. As you saw there, I was struggling so much with this, with the second or uh, the hill on the left, the. The hill up into the, or the, the pool up into the mid course. I could not get it to save my life. I, I don't know what, what was going on, what I did wrong. But uh, we have a curved, curved hill going up into the mid course, and then we're having a straight drop, um, to come off the mid course. So pretty interesting. It shouldn't trim you too much. I mean, they are pretty high off the ground. I think they're what the 71 feet off the groundish. So it is actually a pretty big drop. Um, so yeah, here's a bit of a sped up POV for you guys. Yeah, and um, that element right after the well, it's actually just a drop right after the mid course. Um, like most of the drops on this were curved, but I was thinking like I feel like there are too many curved drops and too many curved airtime hills that we, we got to do something a little bit different for this one and it works out nicely because um, if they're not both going in the same way it kind of works out better and right now we're just going to be trying to match them up so they're going the same speed off of this. So a bit of an uh, interesting thing when we were building this and watching uh, the POV you don't get too much interaction from the front but if you're sitting in the back I feel like there's a little more interaction. Uh, also in Planet Coaster, if you ever want to get a POV though, you're always, uh, you only have one angle unless you're sitting in a guest, uh, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, you can only look one way, but if you're riding in real life, you can look around. I mean, you can, you can move around a bit in the coaster, uh, as if like, if it's not 360, uh, in this game, like if you did a VR, you could look around and watch the train ahead or below you. 
Uh, in this, you don't because you only are stuck to one angle. But it's really cool in the back. You can actually see the other train above and below you in both trains. Uh, so yeah, really interesting. I add a little bit of straight track because, well, we're going to add a little bit of a special effect right there, a triggered effect. Um, anyway, this is where I kind of took over. Uh, for a bit, I, I said I had a really cool idea for uh, this part of the coaster. And this this didn't work out this turnaround I, I was doing like a double up weird thing into a turnaround like an RMC style turnaround but then I decided to go with a, like a more classic turnaround uh, but I just took completely scratched the double up because once you drop off the mid course you only have I think it's either like 21 anywhere from 20 to 40 miles an hour and this footage just sped up and that's it was crawling even when the footage was sped up it would have been like iron rattlers old old helix where it took you like two minutes to complete it before uh it got converted into iron rattler instead of just rattler but yeah really interesting and pretty cool we're getting really close to the uh the trip back to the break run over there uh so you go through some tunnels and to that pop up and to the break run and um, it's very important that off the mid course that they're both going at the same speed because even if one's going just a little bit faster, if, if it's going like a little bit ahead, that's where I want them to be even and to match up because like it's important because you're going at a slower speed than the rest of the ride. So it's not like if you're close to each other, it's not like it's going to stay like that. But um, when it's slower, it's important that you have that because you know you're not going to have that much room to catch up. So as you can see here, this is more of where the airtime comes in. We do a little uh, airtime run. I mean, it's only two hills or three hills uh, on this side, but uh, this is more uh, lateral based, more uh, G-force. Uh, I guess what I should say is it's more intense than the uh, or more airtime based. It's it's this ride is focused on intensity, not as much airtime. So at the end, I wanted some more airtime more you know more that feeling the w of weightlessness so you could it felt like a more complete ride because sometimes wooden coasters are based on laterals and um, sometimes some they're based on airtime some of them are based on laterals I wanted this to be a little bit more of a mixture which is why we added a couple airtime hills and I guess you would get some pretty good airtime over some of these hills because it is lower to the ground overall you probably would get some pretty good airtime this is a more of a camelback while the other goes through two airtime hills I'm not sure you would get too much airtime on that but you you do do some really cool maneuvers before that and that turnaround all right, we're coming to the end of the ride, and as you can see, the yellow one wins. And um, yeah, we're going to be uh, doing some extra landscaping now, and some, maybe some more theming just to make the ride look um, as good as it can look in the desert. <laughs> so here I was just adding more trains to the block zone. You could add up to four trains uh, on this, but we only did three because if you did four, they would be stopped at the top of the lift which is not what you want or not what we wanted because that would just take away from the ride and uh, I'm definitely gonna come back to this as you can see I'm trying to build a freaking station I cannot build to save my life I <laughs> it makes me so mad I gotta get better at this I do a lot of this stuff off camera though anyway you guys uh, yeah super cool I'm gonna come back to this and uh, I'm also going to redo some of the queue lines. I, I do have an idea for what I want the queue lines to do and the exit lines to make it more, more, I don't know how to describe it, make it better. They, they'll be more in the general vicinity, so I only have to theme, you know, one big queue line. Kind of like how Lightning Racer, there's only one queue line until it splits off into uh, uh, what side of the station you want. You can't do that on Planet Coaster, but I'm going to have both the queue lines right beside each other. Uh, as you can see, all these people are rushing to go ride our coaster, or Alex's coaster, I should say. And I was trying to make an entrance to this area because I wanted this to be a themed area inside the Wacky West Amusement Park, or theme park, I should say. Um, 
more or less kind of like an outlier's cove or outlier's den type of thing. You know, this is where all the bad people go. This is why there's a standoff coming off. And that reverse free fall coaster, I rename it to Silver Bullet, not copying the other wooden coaster, but um, continuing that bad criminal theme, Silver Bullet, you know, y- you feel like you're being shot out of a gun. You, you do reach like almost 100 miles an hour, I'm pretty sure, on that coaster. So really interesting i'm adding a sign to for that themed area so kind of cool to think about uh, i'm not really 100 percent sure on the name so definitely comment down below if you think you have a better name than i do yeah and it was kind of hard to place that sign because it was right next to like the edge of the park so it kept saying obstructed and you had to move it over but uh michael managed to figure it out and i think it looks pretty good so we're just uh Scrolling around here, um, checking out the, how the other coasters are doing and stuff. I did the short and queue line treatment to this ride too. As you can see, it's just so absurd how long this queue line was. And as you could see, I did actually, uh, as you saw, this the line did actually die down, which is really interesting. Um, so I shortened the queue line by a bunch. Um, no matter how long this queue line gets, I mean, it's one of the first rides. It doesn't even re- reach the bottom of the stairs where I just connected that. It only does a, a couple of switchbacks, but not too much theming in this line. I think uh, what I did now would make it more manageable for theming. So pretty interesting that this is more of an amusement park ride. It's not going to have as much theming. Uh, theming is fun and all. It, so time consuming I'm not saying that I don't like it I'm just saying it's a little more of a pain it's not as fun but I definitely do get around to doing it as you can see there are a lot of buildings and oh my gosh these queue lines are full but yeah this is such a cool ride everyone likes it and here's what Alex thinks of all the feedback all the guests yeah, well, when we did the other coaster layout, at first we opened the park to see how people liked it, and everybody, and I mean like everybody, went for the yellow one. There was like three people on the red one. Or maybe it's the opposite. Um, I know I know, one had... Yeah, everyone was going for the red one. Yeah, so everybody was going for one over the other, and I think that's because that one had more intense elements towards the end, like it jerked you around, uh, and we f- I guess we forgot to smooth that one out instead of the other one. So you can see some trains uh, cycling through the layout. At the very end, we will give you a POV with some Planet Coaster music. Uh, None of this commentary. And we're coming to the end of this. We got about six more minutes left in this episode. Uh, We're going to do some theming. But yeah, if you guys enjoy this video, if you enjoy the Wacky West series, please leave a like. Comment down below what coasters you think should be added to this park. Comment down below some names for the other coasters. Because I don't want to have to name all those coasters by myself. And I mean, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. It's a little more spread out than I wanted to. Uh, I mean, the last episode was almost think two weeks ago or something like that uh but it's it's a little hard because i want to actually get into more coaster content i want to get into more um predictions stuff like that more theories because that's how i'm going to grow my channel ultimately if you really think about it uh i only do planet coaster videos i mean i have other videos on my channel that have to do with roller coasters but the majority of them are planet coaster videos and i do want to kind of come away from that a little bit because i do have so much more knowledge than um than what i share on planet coaster and so that's why i want to start doing that on my channel i mean you can ask alex you can ask anyone uh i don't share all that knowledge i don't i don't make i don't do that on planet coaster uh, but that's why I want to start making other YouTube videos about that. Like uh, one that's coming out Friday is what's next for Hershey Park. What my predictions on what's coming out, what Hershey Park could possibly get next. So tune in for that, you guys. And I want to do more videos like that, more theories and other videos. And as you can see, this is the special effects that I was talking about. We added some Roman candles that don't go very high off the ground. Kind of like an explosion happening. I don't know. Make your own story up. Use your imagination, you guys. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you guys came up with. But, yeah, here's Alex. It's kind of just like a tall sparkler, and we're trying to get the track queued up. So it will go when you're, like, uh, halfway down the hill on the 
uh, after the break run. And uh, there's a pond over there, which, like, Wacky West, um, it doesn't have to, it, it can go far from the theming. Like, there's plateaus in uh, this park. Um, you wouldn't see that in the Wild West. That's why it's called the Wacky West. That's why there's, you know, water source and that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, if there is an amusement park built like this, this would be my destination park where I would have to go. Uh, this would be so interesting if there were plateaus 250 feet in the air and you built an amusement park across those. Although, I would not like to climb steps 250 feet in the air if they had, like, a cable car or something like that. Anyway, here is a POV, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.